This video provides a brief introduction to the XLS X Writer module. This module can be used to create and write Excel files using Python. I mostly work on financial models and data science projects. Many clients prefer outputs in Excel. In addition, many legacy systems use Excel files to store and collect data. This is not ideal, but we have to deal with clients' requests. Hence, knowing how to handle Excel files in Python is a useful skill. This introductory video focuses on writing an Excel file using Python. So we start with this initial Excel file and I want to translate this um, into Python and then output the file into Excel and I want to preserve all the features including the formulas and also my assumptions. So for instance in this case scaling the business increasing revenue adjusts all the other figures. Firstly, I strongly suggest to create a virtual environment. I covered this in another video. So I select this folder, I click up here, type CMD and I'm now in the right folder to create my virtual environment. So I just type Python minus M then and then I can name it, for instance, fin for financial model and that will take a while. Now this creates a virtual environment which we activate by navigating to scripts and then activate. So we navigate to our environment which is called thin and to scripts and then we type activate and that should activate our environment and now you see in front in brackets the name of our virtual environment. Then we have to install the module using the pip installer. So I just type in pip install and then the name of the module. All the code I use in this video is available on my github. The link is down below in the description. So I open sublime text and start um, two new files. My code is usually used in the back end of an application or website. Nobody gives me any front end work because I have no sense of beauty. So I tend to write a simple test file to run my code in the command line just to see how things go. I call this a test.py. So I do that first. So I just add here a doc string. So this is simply for testing. And I start with an import statement. Um, of course, we haven't created any of this yet. We will do this in a minute. So from finance, which is another Python script, I import financial model, which is a class that doesn't exist yet. And then I start um, initializing my model. So we do this with a default setting. So I have to actually uh, first create all of that. Um, and then I create the income statement in Excel. So that's a method called income underscore statement, which I also have to create. So before we proceed, let's have a look at the original Excel model um, in a bit more detail. So all the functions we see, they have to be preserved. Um, it is very common that items um, of the income statement are linked to revenue in financial modeling. These models tend to be used um, to value companies, which actually is um, my main business, so to speak. Items are linked based on various ratios, which you see here um, on the right hand side. So let's now create uh, the class and the method. Good, so I start with importing the module which we downloaded. So that will work fine once I'm in my virtual environment. And then I create the class. I also need to create um, here the income statement method. I will just do that. So def 
income statement method self. And for the time being, I'll just do a little pass. We want to use um, the value for revenue as a parameter in the model. The various things to implement this, one obvious way to do it is to use the dunder init method and use an attribute which I might call revenue. And we can set a default. So now I have uh, the dunder init method specified. If you want to know more about object oriented programming in Python, I have done another video. So I specified a default, um, I just said 5000, let's do 5000. And then um, as you can see, we assign it um, in this line nine. So self.ref, which is my attribute is equal to ref. So this will give me the option later to modify it. Now, when I initialize it here, I don't change it. So I use default settings. But of course, if I pass an argument, I could always modify this if wanted. So I create an Excel file in line 13, which I just call model. And then I add a, a worksheet that's also needed. So I use the add underscore worksheet method. I just call this worksheet statement. So first we will need some labels. So for instance, I want to display revenue when I want to display cost of goods sold and so on. To do this, I use the write method. So I refer to my worksheet, which I call statement, use the dot operator, use the write method. I talk about where I should place it. So this is typical Excel. So I specify the cell, which is A5. And then I provide um, whatever I want to display. In our case, it's revenue. So we save that and we just run again our test file. Let's see. And we go to the folder and you see nothing actually really happens. We don't see anything popping up yet because we always have to close the file before we can commit any changes. Otherwise, nothing will be saved. So in here, we have to make uh, the close statement. So we use the close method. So I refer here to the Excel file and basically close it again. Now we see this file popping up, which is great. We click on it and we have now revenue written in A5 as requested. Now this is a good start. Next we will put a value next to it um, and then we also add cost of goods sold and then we try to add here a formula. So here we do another label and so this will be cost of goods sold and then we can throw in some values. So that would be then B5 and here we would simply refer to what we store in on our attribute, so self.ref. So instead of write, we use now write formula and that will be in row six. Um, and now we can just do what we do in Excel. We can just literally take um, the same approach. So like in Excel equal to, then we would refer to B5, which is our revenue times the ratio and the ratio here is um, 85%. We could also have a separate cell where we store the ratio and then link this in. So now you see our revenue is written as 5000 and our cost of goods sold refers to the formula. Yeah, so it refers to the revenue times the ratio. So that's working absolutely fine. This is fantastic. So these are the main features I wanted to cover and of course now we just have to scale it up. So we have to do it for all the different items um, and this of course can be done very effectively um, in a for loop. So I will just show you this. Now this is for a slightly extended version of the problem but the same principles apply. The difference is I provide here a list of all the items I want so I can simply iterate through the list. And then I use a for loop. Um, it's convenient to do this using enumerate. So I can refer to um, the position, which I call number and the name of the item. And then I can have here a starting position. Yeah, so for instance, you might like to start putting information in 
in row five or six. And of course, um, we count from zero. So in this particular case, we would start putting information in with uh, row five. And then we simply write our um, statement here. So I convert then this into a string. So we see a string function here. Um, and I add the string to A, which is, um, of course, the name of the column. So that would position me um, in row five. And then I move to row six, seven. I go through um, the list of items. So this will simply create now in um, column A um, the list of items I want. And then I simply populate my values on all the different formulas and finally I um, commit to it um, as you have seen before. I might cover additional features in future videos. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. I see you in the next one. May the force be with you.